go through is about WebAssembly. Um, so I want to provide some background to what this is. Uh, WebAssembly, as you, you might be aware already, uh, was a technology that kind of emerged uh, for the browser as a way to uh, make it easier to develop complex multi-language, polylanguage applications uh, and be able to run, you know, compile them down into a common runtime and then actually just uh, run them. And, you know, WebAssembly has been kind of around for a few years. Uh, has been gaining steam with respect to browsers. Every browser has some kind of native support port at this point. Uh, more recently, the Envoy community has seen it, seen it as a kind of a mechanism that could enable customization, uh, lowering the barrier to entry of customization of the proxy. Just get a sense of what that means. Uh, we build some custom uh, filters for Envoy into our kind of enterprise glue uh, Envoy wrapper. Uh, in order to build those, we've basically kind of uh, compiled against mainline Envoy, you know, something near master. Uh, and then we've, we've packaged up our extra filter logic. We, we had to write it in C++ in a particular way that uh, agreed with the compilation process for Envoy. Uh, and then as we need to do new releases or update eight guys or whatnot, we'll, we'll kind of do full release processes of that wrapper. Uh, so this isn't impossible, but it is fairly cumbersome of, a, of an extensibility story, um, if for no other reason than the fact that we need to compile the entire Envoy. So this takes quite some time, uh, even on a really beefy machine. Um, and C++, uh, you know, the, the basic, with the specific constraints that Envoy gives you, isn't necessarily the most approachable kind of getting started story for development, especially if we're just trying to build a specific filter that you know, has pretty self-contained behavior. Um, so the Envoy community has been seeing WebAssembly as something that could really change the game. If we could run this WebAssembly kind of runtime inside the proxy, and we could kind of make it train people on how to develop Envoy WebAssembly modules uh, that kind of fit into the filter chain, uh, that could make it much easier, you know, then people only need to worry about that logic in the language of their choice. So this has kind of initially been introduced uh, at, as of, you know, in Envoy uh, as an experimental feature. I want to highlight that um, late last year or early this year, we've been very close to development of it. As it was released, we, we announced WebAssembly Hub, um, which I'll show in a little bit. Um, but basically, you know, we're, we're kind of helping the community and helping, uh, you know, really push this forward, eager to kind of get this uh, into mainline Envoy, not as an experimental feature, but as kind of a default way to customizing the proxy. Um, to that end, we've got some tooling and we've got this online kind of uh, directory of, of extensions. And in this demo, I'm going to show you just what does it look like to actually deploy a WebAssembly module to a Glue installation. Okay, all the setups out of the way. So let me install, uh, actually, let me make sure I don't have Glue running. Yeah, so it looks like I've just got, I've got one kind of extra namespace called Splunker. This is a demo application I've deployed. Otherwise I've got an empty cluster. So the first thing I'll do is just install uh, Glue Gateway. I'm going to install open source. Uh, and the one thing I'm doing uh, is providing a values file. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So our values file just has a single value, uh, global wasm enabled is true. And this basically in our glue open source helm chart, um, this will basically make two configuration changes that are necessary to enable WebAssembly modules. Uh, one is setting an environment variable in one of the deployments. More importantly, the second is actually deploying the Envoy image that has wasm support. So this is still experimental. This isn't the, the native kind of glue envoy wrapper. Um, so you wouldn't by default have this logic. You would need to turn it on this way. Uh, and it's worth mentioning for enterprise customers, it still isn't stable enough to, uh, to be kind of like released as an enterprise feature. Um, but we have been working with some customers and providing builds as necessary. So you can't go and turn this on on your enterprise installation today. But if that's an interesting to you, uh, please talk to us. We're, we're happy to kind of figure something out. 
Great. So let me check and make sure that glue is installed. Uh, I'm just going to get the pods. Looks like we've got glue running. Uh, uh, everything appears to be healthy. So let's also deploy our demo application and make sure that that um, is wired up. So this is a really um, native, uh, sorry, really naive kind of um, example. This demo application just will, will is a server that will output or respond with information about the request that came in. And we're going to match on just any domain, any path prefix. Uh, and let's curl it. I'm going to use the curl syntax here, which is um, kind of a nesting glue CTL proxy URL. It's just a convenience mechanism to get the URL for your glue proxy. And when I curl that, because I only have this one virtual service matching on any domain, it matches to this route. It forwards the request to our Spelunker service. And as we can see, all that this service is doing is just kind of printing out some information um, about the request that came in. Cool. So now what I want to do is deploy a WebAssembly module that will that I can show how it will affect this request. Um, first, let's look at what it means to deploy a WebAssembly module. Uh, because we've already, so in, in Envoy, we've already kind of provided the scaffolding, the, the mechanism, the framework in Envoy to know what to do with this image. Um, so really what we need to do is two things. One is we need to provide Envoy the, the kind of enough information to be able to go find and, and pull and, and deploy that filter logic. Uh, and it needs a name so we can kind of link it uh, to the filter chain in the Envoy config and it needs a root ID so we kind of know which module to extract from this, um, dis this distributed uh, uh, package. Uh, and then we can provide a configuration to on to the WebAssembly filter. So in our case here, all we're doing is this is a module that is very uh, dumb. It just reads the request. Uh, it actually operates on the response. It will it will add a response header that says hello and then provide uh, as a value like whatever the config that we passed in as a string. Um, so what we're looking for is I, I should be able to apply this. Um, and then make the same command and we should see that it's been modified with the new header. I'm applying this to my gateway CRD. Um, so there's two CRDs. The virtual service is where I defined the route. The gateway is where you uh, bind that route to a particular port or a particular listener. Um, so I'm going to patch our default gateway on port 8080 and add uh, just the fact that there should, there's a new Wasm filter to add to the filter chain. So I can do this with kubectl patch. Oops, don't want to change that. That will break. Um, I'm using patch two actually. So I had a second example um, with metrics, uh, which we could also use. It's just a little bit easier to see um, that the add header took effect. So let's run that same curl command. And voila, we see um, hello world is kind of a modified, I, as modified modification of the response here. And that's exactly what we were looking for, uh, which means that Envoy received this configuration, added this filter to the chain, and this logic actually ran successfully. So that's pretty cool. Um, I would like to just show while we're here, um, we do have this website called WebAssembly Hub. I recommend going to it um, to get a better sense of what's available. And this is a, a pretty new effort, pretty early kind of in terms of building a uh, kind of a registry of meaningful plugins. But there are some examples, a fair amount of examples from the community. Um, some or you know, a lot of them are still relatively simple just to understand the concepts. but. Uh, would would highly recommend if you're interested to start playing around with this. Um, and in addition to the hub, which is kind of our, um, you know, the the public kind of registry of these things, that makes it easier to distribute because you can just push to the hub. Um, in addition to that, we also have WASM-ME, uh, which is our command line tooling. So this tooling will make it easy, uh, will help you make it easy to kind of build uh, and publish your modules into uh, WebAssembly Hub, the catalog, and then also it's got some commands to just simplify even the few manual steps that I just walked through to deploy those modules to Glue. 
So that's about it for the first demo that I wanted to go through, really just to show what does it look like to deploy WebAssembly module onto Glue. As you can see, it's really easy. Um, our example is pretty simple, but uh, there is a lot of power that WebAssembly is going to bring. And as we make it more stable and as it becomes more of a mainline feature, we're really excited to see what the community uh, is able to do with it uh, on top of Glue.